Hello and welcome to another episode of A Fresh Perspective here on Heavenward Thinking. Today we're finishing off Luke chapter 11. We're going to be going through verses 45 through 54. So I'll read them and we'll get right into this week's conversation. One of the experts in the law answered him, Teacher, when you say these things, you insult us also. Jesus replied, And you experts in the law, woe to you, because you load people down with burdens they can hardly carry, and you yourselves will not lift one finger to help them. Woe to you, because you build tombs for the prophets, and it was your ancestors who killed them. So you testify that you approve of what your ancestors did. They killed the prophets, and you build their tombs. Because of this, God in his wisdom said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill, and others they will persecute. Therefore, this generation will be held responsible for the blood of all the prophets that has been shed since the beginning of the world, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who was killed between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, this generation will be held responsible for it all. Woe to you experts in the law, because you have taken away the key to knowledge. You yourselves have not entered, and you have hindered those who were entering. When Jesus went outside, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law began to oppose him fiercely and to besiege him with questions, waiting to catch him in something he might say. As we look at this section, just starting off right away with the experts in the law answering Jesus, what can we learn from this person's great question and Jesus' answer? First of all, I, I... You just got to get the picture, right? The experts in the law are talking to the one and only expert of the law, right? So I mean, you really got to get that picture because they have no clue. Mm-hmm. They're literally arguing with the only one who's qualified to be the expert of the law. And they they, they're, they, they think they're going to win, right? Mm-hmm. But the only reason they think they're going to win is because... They refuse to accept Jesus for who he is, right? Mm-hmm. But just you get that picture, and then you think, well, we would never do that. And yet, we do it all the time, right? Mm-hmm. I, sit, I sit in meetings, I sit with people all the time who are literally arguing that they are an expert in the law, right? Their viewpoint, what they think, their interpretation is the right interpretation. And, and I think God must look down at us sometimes and go, you're kidding me, right? Like, you, you really are kidding me that you guys are going to spend your time arguing things that you simply don't know what you're talking about. Mm. And I, I just can't believe, like, Jesus, like, what that must have been like to be like, are, are you serious right now? Like, are you really serious that you are going to... It's why he lambastes them, because mm. he absolutely positively knows like, here's where I am and where you should be, and here's where <laughs> you are, right? It, it's just amazing to me, the perspective that we have at certain moments. You, you and I went to uh, a banquet, right, uh, this last weekend, and the guy said something that we've I've heard before, right? But he, he reminded me of that whole little saying that says, we're all no one in need of a someone, mm. right, so that we can reach everyone, mm. right? But you have to absolutely positively have to grasp that the someone jesus mm-hmm. is, is miles and miles and miles and light years and universes <laughs> away from where i am in life mm, absolutely yeah I, I i love how you point that out here at the beginning of this this section because this religious leader this expert in the law has has the audacity to challenge what jesus is saying he doesn't get the hint from jesus's rebuke of the pharisees i don't know why you would challenge it and be like well you're kind of hurting my feelings too when you just listen to what jesus said to them great now it's turning on you and yet like you pointed out we do this all the time i think uh, the similar situations when we uh, have the audacity to challenge the word of God and say, well, did God really say that? Or is he really meaning that I do this? Like Jesus is the word in the flesh. We have the word given to us in, in scripture and, and we have the audacity to do the same thing, challenge the very law, the very word of God. We think that we're an expert in the law or we, we think, well, Jesus didn't really mean it this way or, you know, maybe I don't have to do this quite this way. You know, Jesus is the only, as you said, the only one qualified to be the expert in the law. The word of God is the only law that is qualified not our interpretation of that and so it's important for us to get that straight Uh, and then as you 
pointed out, we have to make sure we understand who Jesus is, that he's way, way, way up here, and we don't even compare on the chart. We don't get to even level one. Like, we need a Savior, Jesus, and yet we go around walking like we're Jesus, and that we have the authority to say and do whatever we want to say and do because we're just experts. And I think a lot of us, all of us, would benefit from just understanding that Jesus is the expert. Maybe we should learn from him and follow him kind of like he told us to. Yeah, and I think none of us would say that we're Jesus. You know, we're not we're not audacious enough to say that. But but <laughs> we act like that. We mm. act like that in the way we argue mm -hmm. with people. We act like that in the way in our conversation. We act as if we absolutely positively know. But here's here's the problem, right? The very first thing he says to them is you, you put this burden on people, which mm. is what we do all the time with our expectations and our rules and our and you will not lift a finger to help them out of that. So we again it goes back to the whole idea. We just want to be the policeman. Mm -hmm. We want to point out, write the tickets, but we're not gonna we're not gonna help you. Right? I'm gonna point out you broke the law, but I'm not gonna help you get back on track. And mm. that's that's what what God says. You know, in Galatians, Paul says, like, listen. You know, if, if one of you stumbles or falls, let those of you who are spiritual. Right? We, there's a real big problem with that because, again, we just talked about it. A bunch of people who look like they're spiritual <laughs> mm. and they think they're spiritual and they would act like they're spiritual. But God would say they're not spiritual. Mm. Right. So you might want to take a step back. And we, we really need to look at like this whole concept of how are you arguing? Right? How are you arguing with people and talking to people and communicating with people things? Right? Are you communicating and putting a whole load of things on them and then said, okay, go ahead and deal with it? Mm. Right? Yeah, I think it's a great assessment we have to look at in our lives and in our Christian churches and communities. Is, is Are we just burdening people or are we helping people? Because Jesus, he, he, when he's telling people the truth, when he's preaching, he, it's not always an easy thing he's saying. Sometimes it can seem like a burden what he's asking, but he doesn't just weigh someone down with something and say, okay, now go try it all here on your own. I'm not going to lift a finger to help you. Jesus helps people through the situation. He assesses a situation and says, you need to leave your lifestyle of sin behind. Now, this is what you need to do. Here's how I'm going to help you with that. The, the Pharisees, the experts in the law, these religious leaders, they were just placing a huge huge burden on people and saying, well, deal with it yourself. And I think we fall into the temptation too. Uh, we don't like to help other people. We don't want to be sharing their burdens at all. And, and yet, as you pointed out, Galatians chapter 6 and multiple other passages show us as Christians, we're supposed to help carry each other's burdens. We should be in this together, not being an elitist like the Pharisees and the experts in the law. Yeah, I, I mean, I think when you go to, you know, verse 52, and then you finish up the section, right? He talks about the, the fact that, what are you experts in the law? You have taken away the key to knowledge. You didn't go in yourself, and you hindered those who were trying to go in. I've been on this kick lately about pondering, right? Can, are you willing to ponder what other people are saying? It's funny. Most people, when they listen to somebody else, when you're in a discussion with them, they're not listening to what you have to say <laughs> to ponder what you're saying. They're listening for how they can argue. Mm. Or they're, they're not even listening. They're just trying to figure out what they're going to say next. Or they just slough off. right? Like If somebody gives you a five-paragraph verbal sentence, mm. right, like, like <laughs> book, and you say, oh, well, okay, maybe, sorry, could be, that's not an appropriate response to what they it just means you you really truly didn't listen to anything that they had to say mm -hmm. right what you are doing is saying I'm, i i want to get to what i want to say mm. we're not engaging here what we're doing is I, i'm gonna stonewall you and say yeah yeah I, I don't really care about what you're saying and that's what these guys would do they there were people looking for knowledge and they're stonewalling them and saying, yeah, no, don't, you're, what you think, no, don't ponder that. Don't think about that. You know, that's dumb to ponder that or think about that or do that. Or, and there, there is a ton of stuff in the Bible that we should be pondering, mm. right? But rather than thinking about things, what do they, these people do? Well, the Pharisees and the experts of law decide, rather than pondering what Jesus just said and taking their, their tongue lashing and going, uh, we better fix this. They they just decide, yeah, we're gonna kill Jesus. Mm. Seems weird until you've sat in church meetings, where that's exactly how that goes, mm. right? Somebody gets caught, and then what do they do? 
they immediately go home and start figuring out how to get the pastor or how to get the deacon or how to get mm. somebody rather than going, maybe I should work on this. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you'd, you'd think, and as we look at the, the ending of this section, you'd think they would have been smart enough. Now there's been two giant bashings where Jesus is first giving up a pretty harsh rebuke to the Pharisees, and then maybe even more harsh rebuke to the experts in the law. You'd think they would realize, oh, maybe we should do something. Maybe I have something I need to take care of, some sin in my life, or maybe something I should do differently how I treat other people. Uh, no, they don't get that at all. Uh, I love how it, it says they begin to oppose him fiercely and besiege him with questions. Like, you just asked a question, and it didn't go out go well at all, like, disastrous. And they're like, ah, let me keep doing it, and just doing it, and doing it, and doing it. And we're going to catch Jesus in something. Like, again, the one only expert in the law. You're going to try to catch him. He is the word of God in the flesh. You're going to try to catch him in something. He says, you're never going to out match Jesus and yet we do the same thing time after time we think that somehow we're going to have a better idea than the person who created us and then the God who created us and made us we somehow think we are smarter than our creator and if we could just get to the point where we accept the rebuke and then change our lives accordingly we'd be in such a better place yeah, like, again the, the Pharisees the Sadducees the the experts of law they did not build a religious system that was based on people pondering and thinking about God. It was based on people just obeying and doing what they said. Mm. Right. And we have that same religious system today. Right. We don't you don't build a church off of people pondering what you're talking about. You build a church off of people just doing what you th said, believing mm. what, hey, here's what I believe. So you should all just believe it. Mm -hmm. right? And anybody who might question or ponder, we go, well, no, no, that, that can't be right. So. Jesus is saying, listen, give people the key to think, mm. to knowledge, to understand, mm -hmm. to, to work out their salvation. Right? Do that. Right? But these Pharisees and the teachers, like, they, they won't do it. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, we need to make sure that we are, are giving people that opportunity to uh, focus on what Jesus says, not yeah. just what we say. Again, he's the expert. We are not. We could avoid so many problems if we just applied that. Yep. Well, I hope that you've been challenged and encouraged by this section this week, and that you'll join us next time for another episode of A Fresh Perspective here on Heaven We're Thinking.